All right, so we're talking about the uh, Konica Minolta CS7 software here. Um, when you log into this software, first thing that's going to pop up is your order list. This is where we're working 99% of the time, right? We've got our list of patients. We select from that list, and we come down here to the bottom and hit perform, okay? Uh, we're going to procedure map all those studies for you so that you can um, have your views and your exam tags built in automatically. If you don't have a work list, we do have the option under patient registration. We can type in that patient information if need be, uh, which I'll do now. Say that's a test patient. We're going to perform that study. And again, if we're manually registering patients, uh, we're going to select from the exam tag palette what we are shooting. So we've got our body regions over here on the left-hand side. Within each body region then, we've got our um, anatomy, and then on further to the right, we've got the views for each piece of anatomy. Okay, so if we're doing a hand, we're going to go to upper extremity, hand, PA, oblique, lateral, adds them down there at the bottom. We're going to perform, and our views are going to be right over here on the left-hand side. So we've made our image. Uh, we've got a hand phantom here. Um, right off the top, um, what we should talk about is multi-study imaging. Um, what you'll see up here is the exam list. The exam list is going to view, is going to show you the tags for that hand uh, exam. If you're doing multiple studies on this patient, you'd have a study list, right? A study list over here to the left, we can toggle between different studies. So if, we've all, if we're also doing a wrist, we would select on wrist and uh, it would pull up the exam tags for that wrist and then go back to the hand, however you want to shoot it. From the exam list screen, we've got a couple buttons here. We've got a repeat button where we're going to copy that exam tag, adds another one right there. Okay. We can copy the image itself. Makes a copy of that image. We can then send that with maybe a different algorithm. Or we have image exchange. So image exchange is going to allow us to say, you know what, we shot this out of order. So that study was actually supposed to be hand PA. It's going to reprocess that image uh, and change the, the uh, name of that series description. So it'll now go across to PAX as a hand PA uh, and it's going to be processed correctly. Back up to the top here, um, we've got the study tab versus the Q tab. The Q tab, if I go in there, that's just going to tell me in what order that's going to send to PAX. Okay. We can move those around if need be, but generally speaking, the way that you shot them is the way that it's going to pull up in the queue. Okay. Across the top here, we've got your full screen display. So if I hit full screen, it's, uh, it's great for doctors that like to use your modality as a viewing station. Um, we can kind of come in here. Uh, it kind of disallows them from affecting the image at all. Uh, all they can really do is go in there and view that image. Um, if they want to do any uh, adjustments to that, well, they would want to do that in packs. Um, as long as they've, as you've already sent the image though, it's not a bad idea to just let them view it in here. Again, up at the top, we're in single mode. We can go to uh, four screens at a time or even six. Yeah. Let's go back to single. The quick tab and your toolbar along the bottom down here. Okay, that's where you're going to find the majority of the tools that you'll be using. So that quick tab is pinned if you see that little thumbnail because I always want that to come up after the exposure has been made. First thing you'll see is your S value and your G value. You'll see those represented in the top right corner of your image as well. So we achieved a 316 S value on this uh, phantom image, which is perfect because the range that we're looking to be in is between 300 and 450. Okay. Um, we can mess with that S value if, you want. if we want. We can brighten it, darken it. We can make big adjustments or small adjustments. Because uh, that, that S value is just going to affect the density or the brightness of your image. G value, on the other hand, is going to mess with your contrast. And if we mess too much with that G value, it will affect your radiologist's latitude. So I would suggest you leave that one alone. S value you can play with as much as you want. If you're looking for more uh, for, for a different kind of measurement, let's say you want to see an exposure index, that's going to be over here on the left-hand side. 
In the top corner, that exposure index, we achieved a 540. The target was 390, so that's telling me that I'm a little bit overexposed on that hand phantom. Uh, my deviation index is 1.42. Again, same information, but given to you on a scale. So that's telling me that I'm slightly over. I want my DI to be exactly zero. That means I hit my target, bullseye in the middle, okay? Um, that exposure index, unlike the S value, is proportional. So if, uh, if we're shooting for, let's say, 400, and I uh, shoot an 800, then I need to cut my dose in half to achieve that 400 mark. So that's a really nice tool. You can also use that S value, again, uh, just is telling you you're the brightness of your image. So we can play with that. We're looking for 300 to 450 on that guy. Next set of tools down here, we've got text. We can grab from our uh, pre-built set of tools, uh, excuse me, pre-built set of annotations here. Um, I'm going to select that and then just click on the image wherever you want it to be. If I highlight that, I can rotate it, enlarge it, make it small. I can even put a background behind it or invert it, okay? Or, of course, delete it, All right? And we can also free text. I'm just going to click on the image, type whatever it is that I want to type, okay? And click off of it and it's there. And I can do those same adjustments to my free text as well. Okay, but we'll delete that guy and we'll return. Uh, next tool is rotate and flip. Rotate and flip, we can use that and, and, and that is nice. A lot of uh, folks like this. Um, gives you a real quick view of every option, right? But you've also got your rotate and flip down here at the bottom of your screen right here in the left center. We've got rotate left 90 degrees, right 90 degrees, or flip, right? Just a horizontal flip, okay? Other than that, with the new version software, we do have free rotation. So if I come back over here to the right-hand side, uh, towards the bottom right corner, we've got free rotation. Okay, and we can use those little tools if we want, little, little things at a time, or what's cool is I can actually just grab that image, drag it around, whatever I want to do to it. Let's say that's where I want it right there. I hit OK, that's the way it's going to send. Okay, and it will shrink that image to fit into a 17-inch box. Okay. ROI stands for region of interest, right? So that little blue box pops up and wherever I click, that will be the new center of my ROI. It's going to change the density of that image as I move it around. Okay. So it really just affects the brightness of the image. Really nice tool to, uh, to use rather than window level. And uh, if you want to adjust that ROI, we can go into ROI adjust over here. Maybe that box is a little too big, right? You want to make some more fine-tune adjustments. I'm going to use my two-point up here, and I'm just going to select a point and a point to make that smaller box, and then I can move that one around. Makes a little bit more fine-tune adjustments to that density. And we'll return. Say we like that. We're just going to turn that ROI off. It'll still save that image the way you uh, the way you uh, messed with the ROI. Cropping and masking. Okay, we've got cropping, of course. That's a pink box. You know, we can crop a little bit if you need to. Generally, I would tell you not to, to crop too much, right? You can crop that, that uh, raw dose off of the image. But, uh, of course, the more you crop, the more magnified that image is going to become. So if I return now, um, you'll notice that the image may look a little bit larger, and it will look larger in packs. So we generally don't crop too much. I would rather you come in here to masking. So you'll see the yellow line around your image right now. That is your masked line. It's automatically going to mask any of that white out of the image, right? So we want to bring the mask in, right? Let's say we did something crazy here and we just said, you know what, I actually just wanted the finger, right? So I masked down to the finger, hit return. You'll notice now that you got a yellow line here where we set it. Anything outside of that yellow line is still going to send to packs, but it will be black when it goes to packs. Okay? And it will not magnify that image. Beyond that, if I'm still in that masking, I can use something other than that square, right? I do have a circle I can make. If you're doing sinus imaging, that's kind of nice back in the old days. But polygonal. Masking is really what we use probably more than anything. So let's say I'm, I mismarked this image and I had a uh, maybe a right marker on this left hand. I can just set points, 
move it around and mask out that corner. So that area will now be black when I send it to PAX. And of course, I can go up to text, throw the correct marker in its place. Okay. Invert, of course, over here is just going to be black to white, white to black. And we already talked about free rotation. Okay. Along the bottom here, we talked about our 90 degree rotations and our flip. Under the other, we do have tube gauze. Now, tube gauze is basically going to be your line placement algorithm. Okay. It's good for really any foreign body, though. So whether I'm doing a, a line placement, a tube placement, um, Maybe I've got uh, uh, x-ray orbits for foreign body uh, for MRI clearance. It's nice for that. Maybe a, a kid's got a splinter in his finger. Um, any foreign body is going to really pop out on that image. And what's really cool about the Konica software, uh, when I turn tube gauze on, it's going to automatically create a copy of that original image. And when you send a PAX, it'll send both the original and the tube gauze image together. Um, and we can configure that any way you want. There are actually one, two, and three levels of tube gauze. Uh, if you want it to be really, really edge enhanced, we can go all the way up to three. Okay. Anything I do to this image, I can also hit reset all to clean that up. Take it back to the original processed image. My exam tag button's down here. One is going to reprocess an exam tag. So maybe I want to uh, take this exam tag that I'm on here and I want to change that to a finger. Okay, It'll now display that it's reprocessed, rename it, and when I hit OK, it'll reprocess it as that, <laughs> not as a pelvis. It'll reprocess it as a finger. Okay, The plus sign exam tag is going to default to your blank exam tag over here. So maybe I want to add a view. That's how I would do it. So now instead of that repross symbol, I'm going to get a plus sign symbol and we can shoot that finger. So if I want to reject an image all the way over here at the bottom left, we hit our reject button, select a reason, let's say QC error, OK, and it's going to ask me, do I want to expose again? That just is asking you, do you want to repeat that exposure? If you do, hit OK, and it's going to add another exam tag ready for you to shoot. If not, if you've already made that second exposure, we can just hit cancel. It'll still reject that image, puts a red X over that thumbnail image, that will not send a PAX now. If I want to get that image back though, that same reject button, if I click on it again, I'm going to hit OK to cancel the reject, and I got that image back. Over here on the right hand side, bottom right corner of your image, you've got a send button, so that's just going to send this one image, or I can send all. I can send everything from this study, and then everything from my multiple studies if I want to do it that way. Purple button down here with a little pause symbol on it, that's going to suspend the study. So if I suspend it, like I'm doing now, that's going to throw it over here into the suspended tab. So we talked about registering your patient manually over here in patient registration. Our order list is where our work list is sitting. That's where we're grabbing our patients. And then our suspended list is stuff that's been, been put on hold. Beyond that, we do have a completed list. So any study that we would have uh, uh, done in the past is going to be sitting here on the completed list. This database does roll off and self-delete, uh, first one in, first one out, and we can set that um, at a percentage interval for you. From the completed tab, I've got a few buttons down here. Now, I don't have any completed studies in here, so let's, let's real quick, let's complete that study that we were just in and complete that study that we had an image on. Let's complete that guy. Okay, so now that's being shown in the completed list. Okay, your yellow uh, host status means that it's trying to send a PAX. Now we're not connected to PAX, so it's going to error on me, uh, which means it'll go pink for an error. Blue right here would mean that we are, uh, we had a good connection and it sent to PAX just fine. Okay. But down here at the bottom, from the completed tab, we can either refer uh, that exam, and all that means is that I'm going to be able to go in and look at those images, maybe play with them a little bit, but I'm really not doing anything with that exam. It's really just for educational purposes. Append, on the other hand, if I have append, uh, if I have that exam selected and I hit append, um, 
I can go back in, re-expose. I can play with my old images, resend them if need be. So pretty much all everything that you'll be doing uh, from the completed list, we'll be using that append option. We can refresh the work list or the completed list if we need to. Guard is going to allow me to stop this study from rolling off the database when it gets to be that time. We use that in educational uh, institutions. If a student wants to hold on to that image for some reason, and then the merge button. So if I need to uh, move images from one patient to another or from one order to another, I'm going to use that merge button. Okay. If I had a wrist hooked up to this, I could uh, move that to another uh, study. So it gives you a really easy uh, pathway to do that. And then over here on the left, we do have a user tutorial. That's actually going to be a, um, now we can cut that out. <laughs> We have a user tutorial. Um, that's actually going to be a, uh, a slideshow, uh, PowerPoint presentation of uh, the manufacturer, giving you the full rundown on everything possible within this software. But of course, if uh, if they don't tell you what you need to know, oh, shoot. If that doesn't get you the information that you need, you can always dial us, and uh, we'll help you out. System is where I'm going to go to shut down or to log off. Right up here in my right top corner is where I would uh, display my detector. Right, we, Our detector is turned off at the moment, but this is where that's going to be displayed. You're going to get your um, uh, charge status, so how much juice do I have in that detector, as well as the uh, uh, connectivity to that detector, one, two, or three bars. Okay. So we do have one more feature on Canonica here. Um, here we have a phantom image of a pelvis. Okay, This was taken with no grid, uh, and it, it's clear that it was taken with no grid. It's very gray, very foggy, right? Uh, we've got a lot of scatter in this image. It's causing that uh, lack of contrast, lack of detail. So with Canonica, we have what's called intelligent grid. Intelligent grid takes the place of your physical grid. Uh, what's really cool about that, I'm just going to turn Intelligent Grid on, so IG is going to be turned on. You'll see that that processes, and look how much better that lo image looks. Okay, we have a high, higher contrast um, and more advanced edge enhancement. Okay, um, So with that Intelligent Grid, no more will you have any grid cutoff. Um, you won't have the added weight of a physical grid, um, and you can apply this Intelligent Grid to anything that you used to use a grid on. Um, if we are using that intelligent grid, I can also, if I press and hold on intelligent grid, change the grid ratio that I'm going to use. So maybe I decide, you know what, I'd like to clean that up a little bit more. I'm going to use a 10 to 1 and apply that. It's going to clean the image up even more. So it takes away even more of that scattered radiation. I can change what tube voltage I use what mass I used, what SID I used, uh, to really fine tune this image. So it gives you a lot of abilities. It's as if you're shooting uh, an exposure. It's as if you're taking an exposure um, and shooting it with every single one of those grid ratios. So it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, in your image processing. So if you're happy with it, we're just going to close out of there, and that's your intelligent grid.